In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, mighty, eternal God, kind, gracious, wonderful Heavenly Father, thank you so much for opening the doors of your temple, that you have granted us all access to come into your house, and you have brought us so close that we surround the altar of grace, that you can speak to us as our dear Heavenly Father, to address us and prepare us for the future. We now open our hearts and we say, Come, O Lord. We are ready to assume it. We are ready to absorb. We are ready, dear Father, to align our lives according to your will. And we are ready, dear Father, to grow in knowledge and wisdom, and we are prepared in order to do that which you are telling us to do. Now, thank you, Daniel, for being our God. Thank you for granting us your only begotten Son, who has come to redeem us, who has come to restore us for our sake, for our sake, so that we can be part of your kingdom. We are thankful for the share of the spirit that you have given unto us. O Lord, you do not have words to express our thankfulness. For the Holy Father, you have also carried us through this time which is so difficult, the time of pandemic, the time, the Holy Father, where we do not know here and there the hearts they ask, where are you? And now, the Holy Father, we can affirm that you are always there and you will never say, forsake us. Now look into the hearts of your people. Answer their prayers. They have now difficulties. They have all sorts of pleas and issues. And now, dear the Father, they turn to you. And they know that the dear Father, you have everything. When I do, and you will tell our Father, you are rich in everything. We have God, we have done, and you have also room is room for all the riches of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. The part, spiritual yes. riches on this room will be gathered. Now, dearly Father, we pray for those who cannot be with us because of comorbidities, because of their age, and because, dear Father, some are willing. And there are those, dear Father, who are sick at home. And they also they realize that they are not comfortable. We pray also for them. But the dear Father, shut them down. Send your dear son. We are waiting with greater desperation. Now give us a will that we can do with your hearts. So that we can use this will that we have in our hands. So that dear Father, we can overcome the evil one. Come on us by your grace. 
Praise of the Lord of blessing is in Jesus' name. And also what the church of Jesus is asking in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, our Bible voyage for this morning is based on the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse seventeen and verse eighteen. Therefore, we do not lose heart, if the hour of our hour of pain is perishing. Yet, in in what may is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's what the big four is in the book of 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 Wat ons licht te verdruk, wat vir haar ongeluk is, bewerk ons in alles, voortreffende, eeuwige, gewig en heerlijkheid. Omdat ons nie laat op die sigbare dinge nie, maar op die onsigbare, want die sigbare dinge is eindelijk, maar die onsigbare eeuwig. My dear brothers and sisters, I am so happy that I could be with you in fellowship in the house of the Lord tonight. And I'm sure you were not aware that I'm coming. Were you aware? Okay. How did you know? You were told. Okay. But I'm happy that you can also respond to the call. Like David also said once, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Being glad, it means that you are excited. Glad, it means you are filled with joy. Glad, it means you are looking forward to that. And therefore, I could also sense that you were also glad for this invitation. And let us keep always the fire burning for coming into the house of the Lord. Because when we come to the house of the Lord, there are benefits to that. And the benefits as we hear tonight, it's eternal glory. That is the benefit. Yeah, we know that we are in this time of COVID-19 coronavirus, where we are limited in everything. There was a time that we could not come to the house of the Lord at all. And our hearts were yearning, desiring to come to the house of the Lord, but we could not. And now things have changed. We can come to the house of the Lord, but also in small numbers. And I see now in your church, you cannot take more than 50. 
how many seat capacities? About 50. So the starting now, if you have to alternate the device and see what kind of this is, somebody must come to give also opportunity for other one to come. Except for us as ministers, because we cannot take a break. We are the front line workers. So we must be there always for you. But the dear brothers and sisters, now I call the words where the Apostle Paul said, therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man, man perishes, yet the inward man being renewed day by day. And then he speaks about the affliction, our like affliction, which is but for a moment is working far more exceedingly to our eternal, eternal weight of glory. My dear brothers and sisters, here the Apostle Paul is addressing the sufferings that we, and we encounter day in and day out. And these sufferings here and there, it is difficult to bear because no one wants to suffer. We want to live a life which is free, a life which is happy, a life which is hidden, not unhindered, but because they were the, the sufferings. And these things refer to, to this outer man. And the Apostle Paul made it clear that this, this is only focused on the outer man, nothing to do with the, with the spiritual person or being. And he emphasizes the emphasis of the suffering that if we are enjoying today is for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, brothers and sisters, but there will be a time that we do not suffer anymore, that we do not have to experience the pains and the evidence anymore, because we will be with the Lord for time and eternity in His kingdom. <clears throat> Now, now, dear brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves, what is the best thing to do to suffer for the Lord or to suffer for the sake of the Lord because there are benefits to that? That is more important, dear brothers and sisters, to suffer for the Lord. Suffering for the Lord, dear brothers and sisters, it means that we die for him. Dear brothers and sisters, that is why the Apostle Paul say, says, I die daily in Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the burden or the suffering that we have. Jesus Christ was also exposed to this suffering. Remember when he walked upon the face of this earth, he also was spitted. He was ignored. He was run down by many. He has a thumb mocked him. He has a that was also the suffering with the Jesus Christ had to endure during his time here on earth. And we know that all those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ will be persecuted, will also experience suffering. Remember the first congregation? Paul will be burned. Before he became Paul, he was so he had also to ask permission to persecute the congregation, the church of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, we are not exempted from that. We are also followers of Jesus Christ, and therefore it is expected of us that we will also endure pains and sufferings. Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, but it is so nice that when we do that for the Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ also made it clear to his followers, and it was a surprise to us today, if we want to be with the Lord, we must take up our cross and follow him. Bearing a cross is not a nice thing. Bearing a cross is a heavy burden. It's not a nice thing. But if we are prepared to overcome the differences, then the benefit it is. But all also I say, it is now the eternal glory that we experience. Yet the Apostle Paul speaks about the afflictions that we will go through. Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, what are those afflictions? I will mention but a few. Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, the afflictions that are, we are faced with today, or oh, even the child in the congregation, we are all faced with those afflictions. First of all, dear yeah, brothers and sisters, 
eles não. Eu, temptation. Temptation. The devil is busy, is hard at work, and he is busy taking people, you know, and sisters. And this, this is also how we, if we are not accepted from that, we will be tempted by the devil. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was in the wilderness and the devil came to him and he tempted him not once, not twice. The Bible mentioned about it three times, but it could be more. He answered us and he tied his best of the Lord and never fell into his temptation. As we will pray for the Lord, the heavenly divine system is that the Lord, the King, has not been in temptation. Dear brothers and sisters, that is the first affliction that we have now to come, come through. Temptation. Temptation happens to everyone. But sometimes you see the children in the world, we talk now that soon the sugar. That is temptation. The devil says, you can think about this evening. Brothers and sisters, Do not fall the afflictions that we have to go through. Dear brothers and sisters, secondly, what is now the other affliction that we have to go through? It is self-denial. Dear brothers and sisters, that we deny ourselves. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ also said, if one wants to follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Sometimes we find it very difficult. to deny ourselves. What is it that we do a self introspection Am I doing the will of the Lord? Am I doing according to that which I promised, the day which I received? Dear brothers, that is always to be away from us. Self denial. The brand sisters, that is now the affliction. But the other affliction that we need to, to, to look at the brand sisters, it is now when we were set by the people, the brand sisters do not want to accept the offer of the Lord Jesus Christ, the offer of salvation. Yeah, we do, do, no, 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 we do, 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 we do not lose heart. Even if people do, do not to listen to what they tell them about the salvation that we receive from the Lord. And secondly, dear brothers and sisters, it is when we are tested by the people that they have to move down the best. And dear brothers and sisters, they also ignore us. And if we meet the line of the apostle, he was also dear brothers and sisters. But he did not give in. He did not give in. The brothers and sisters let us also not give in. Knowing that the Lord allows us. He allows us to give in. 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 He allows us let us come together as an hour that it becomes, you know, a hindrance, a detail to us not to come here. These are the afflictions that we encounter or we 
come across him day by day. That is why the Apostle Paul, when the enemy said him, we do not lose heart. We do not become despondent, dear friends and sisters. We do not give up. But we look at the things which are not seen by an eye. Because of those things that are seen by an eye, they are the brothers and sisters, they are temporal. Something that is temporal has got an expired date. We all have the experience. I said to one sister, you know, all of us, we, have a day we know when they went to a boat. We remember those days and we celebrate them. But the you know, sisters, this is a day that we don't know, a day of our departing, what we say. The day of our departure, on this day, we do not know. Dear brothers and sisters, and therefore we do not want to hide ourselves from that. What we do, do, do we look at now? Dear brothers and sisters, the glory that will be given unto us, dear brothers and sisters, that will be offered to those who overcome, who also follow unconditionally, who fought until they, they, they overcome. That is the most important thing. They let us not look up, because the Apostle Paul said, no, the things which are seen, are not seen are temporary. So we are seen are temporary, but things which are not seen are eternal. Dear brothers and sisters, there's many things that we cannot see. We cannot see the love. You can see the, the, the acts of love, the actions of love, but you don't see love itself. Dear brothers and sisters, everything, this is our thing. The love of God, which was which will be eternal for us. Let us remain in the love of God. Let us remain in the fellowship of God. Let us remain in the heart with Jesus Christ. For this will be us to our eternal glory. And when we go into our eternal glory, there's a crown of protection life. We will be made priests and kings. We will rule with the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, let us take all the message of this divine service. Jesus, Jesus all those who are for him and who suffer through him and for him. Dear brothers and sisters, let us also continue to do that. He knows of our salvation. He knows of our burdens. He knows of our difficulties that we go through. But he advocated on our behalf and our Lord so that in the time when he will that he can just us and our soul so that we can be in his glory. Brothers and sisters, and in the glory of our God, we will ask him love and love. In the glory of God, we will also be ever joyful. In the glory of God, we will be joyful. In the glory of God, we will be The temptation will not be the order of the day, but in the praise of God, honor of God, that will be the order of the day. So let us not focus on the affliction that we experience today. The glory that is to come and it will happen when the Lord Jesus Christ appears and takes home. He is home. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, now we want to prepare ourselves for the forgiveness of sins. And, and this is also what we are looking, looking for. Because we see day by day. We are tempted. We are tempted. Sometimes we are influenced by the devil. Here and there we do it, do it consciously. And consciously. But now the offer of forgiveness is given to us. Given us there, there it has come, come to the Lord. And it has tasted. And this is the grace that is the one of us. This grace is the time of need. And this grace is the grace, grace of the forgiveness. Dear brothers and sisters, God does not look at what we have done. 
He looks at the attitude he approaches you. Yes. When you ask forgiveness. What did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Ask, ask, and it will be given to you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us also come to the Lord and receive that. But we promise the promise that when we have received it, we will give all of ourselves. So let me be selfish. We will not keep it for ourselves. We will not keep it for ourselves. But we will also share with those who need it. Jesus Christ. He was ever he was a granting forgiveness. The woman that committed adultery, he forgave him. The girl that was now dying, he was now dying. He forgave him. 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 He our our example. Example. He is our example. Let us learn from, learn from that, that and therefore let us do it and also unconditionally. And we will, we will benefit also from that. from that. We have nothing to lose, lose. when we forgive, but we more to gain. Amen. Amen. So, in preparation for forgiveness of sin, the, the musical item prepared. Oh, hymn number 345. Beautiful, glorious moments. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty, eternal God, our heavenly Father, we bow before you, dear Heavenly Father, for this beautiful encounter at your altar that you have allowed us, dear Father, to experience you, and we have this Damascus experience. Now we have a, we have changed. Now, dear Father, we have repented. Now, dear Father, we have heard what you are telling us to do. And now, dear Father, we want to focus not on the things that are temporal, but we focus on the things that are eternal spiritual things. Dear Father, the crowd of the life. Dear Father, the child will be with you and your dear son. And we're looking forward, dear Father, to be in your kingdom for time and eternity. Bless your children here in diverse situations. That the dear Father, you can also look into each and everyone individually and to respond in a beautiful way. Dear Father, now we remember. Oh, dear Father, we could not know you with us tonight. Dear Father, keep and preserve them in the hope of your head. Let them also be covered by your grace and by this prayer. Accept the offerings of your children. Let your also dear Father, and to the completion and the development of your work. Pray also, dear Father, for those that have made the real things today. Wedding anniversaries, special moments in their lives. Let them also exchange Now we ask you, for we long to be the bright of our souls, shorten the time. Send your dear son, we are waiting with great anticipation. Be with us and be with all our leaders, our dear apostles, and also our dear two apostles. It's dear for them to ask. Humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with you all. Amen. Amen. I missed you. I was looking forward to seeing you. And uh, now that I can see you, then we I'm happy. So let us understand that, uh, that this is what will announce that uh, we must 
always be vigilant in observing these COVID-19 protocols. Because coronavirus is not normal. In fact, we are almost experiencing now the second wave of coronavirus because people, they have the impression that with the lockdown one, level one, it's gone, corona is gone, it's not gone. So, um, also emphasizing that the when you ask always, and sanitize as much as you can. If you don't have a sanitizer, you use soap and water, that's well and good, and keep your distance. Don't keep your distance to the people that you don't love, and if the people that you love, then you go. Your yeah, brother says it doesn't matter where we must keep our distance. And where necessary, stay at home. Don't go out there unnecessary. So I pray and I wish my friends that we are always mindful of that. And secondly, dear brothers and sisters, you know that we did it. Now the red paper for the season. You had no rector after You do not know who to report who to who's now you know the point of now power point where the problem. I have then taken the decision of the COVID disbursement major and we agree that he will assume or he has already assumed the responsibility of the rector of leadership of this communication. So from now onwards, you have a rector, this man. I will come back, or I will send the bishop later on to do now the official, um, in, in, you know, procedure of now placing him into the directorship of this congregation. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. You all know him, eh? he doesn't have to stand up. Yeah. You know him, and he, he is your rector from now onwards. And for your information, uh, you know, I couldn't come to the, 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 the funeral of your, your previous rector because he died on the 22nd, 23rd of now, uh, July. My sister died on the 24th. And therefore, I, the funeral took place almost the same day. That, that, is, that is why I could not come here. It's not that I had something against him. And today I had to make up before coming to this. I want to visit this family, spend some time with them. Okay, so we remember each other and we remember also those who have lost their life because of COVID-19. But let us be careful that it does not, you know, double again. Let us be aware, let us be vigilant when it comes to that. Thank you very, very much. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you.